A wristwatch has to keep perfect time down to the second. And getting that kind of accuracy comes down to more than the precision movements of the hands on the watch. It also takes an airtight, watertight case that protects all the moving parts and keeps everything working inside. That's why these watches start out as strips of stainless steel, an inch and a half thick, that are molded by a 125-ton press into the outermost case of the watch. Stainless steel is steel that's been mixed with a hard metal called chromium to protect it from corrosion and rust. Stainless steel can also be polished again and again to keep the finished watch looking new. And this steel has a little carbon mixed in as well to harden the steel while still leaving it malleable enough to be molded by the press. To form the cases, a worker feeds strips of solid steel through a punch press to punch one round hole into the steel for each watch case. The strips then move to the 125-ton press that bears down with a die to squish the steel into a matching mold beneath it and shape it into a case. Here the machine is stopped so you can see the die and the mold. A worker lines up the peg in the middle of the die with one of the holes in the steel to stamp out each case. Later, those same holes are expanded and refined to house the clear sapphire crystals that fit over the face of the watch. After the basic shape is pressed out, the cases move through six more presses each one fitted with a mold and die that refines the shape a bit more. Once the cases are fully shaped, they're loaded onto a rack and sent through an oven to be heat treated at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat relaxes the molecules in the steel so they're less brittle after the shaping. After the steel cools, the cases travel through a lathe that uses six different rapidly spinning titanium blades to widen the hole that holds the watch face and crystal. It takes the blades just three minutes to shape and expand the round opening, reducing the steel around the face by about 50%. Then, a worker polishes the steel on a grinding wheel to finish off the case. In another part of the factory, a computer-controlled machine carves two-inch square sheets of brass into a round framework to hold all of the moving parts inside the watch. They use brass because it's a soft metal that's easy to cut into the intricate design. The cutter uses 14 different titanium tool heads to cut spaces for the gears, springs, and pins that help the watch keep time. It's such intricate work, it takes a full hour for the machine to cut each disc. After the brass disc is coated in nickel to protect it from corrosion, it's ready for the mechanics that move the watch hands and keep time. The key parts include a spring that gets wound around a barrel when you wind up the watch, and a tiny gear called an escapement wheel that turns as the spring unwinds to drive a series of gears, including one called the balance wheel, that swings back and forth like a pendulum to move the watch hands and keep perfect time. Here's a look at the escapement wheel. Like all the parts in the watch, it's so small, it has to be placed in the disc with a set of tweezers. Once all the moving parts are in place, the face of the watch is built over the disc. The face includes a rotating day and date plate, a brass dial that's painted with hour and minute markers, and the hands. To build the face, the date plate and brass dial are centered on a pin in the disc and protected by silk paper so a machine can snap them into place. Then another machine uses vacuum pressure to pick the second, minute, and hour hands and place them on the pin to complete the face. To finish the watch, the watch face and all of the mechanics are placed inside one of the steel cases. And the case is closed up with clear sapphire crystals on the front and back. The crystals are scratch-proof and waterproof to help protect the watch. The finished watches are put through a series of G-force drop tests. The first drop exposes the watch to 150 Gs, similar to swinging a golf club. The next is 500 Gs, similar to playing tennis. 
And finally, 1,000 Gs, or the force the watch would have to endure if it's accidentally banged into a wall. If everything stays in sync, the watch is ready to keep you running on time.